Welcome everybody to the 40 Finance Channel. My name is Jeff Beers and today I'm looking at a few travel stocks and an ETF that will let you capitalize on the digital age of travel that we see going on right now with the internet and all the different ways that you can connect with properties and flights and things of that nature. So three travel stocks and one ETF for the digital era. Let's jump in. All right, number one on our list today is Bookings Holdings. Bookings Holdings that has just an amazing collection of brands with a historical track record that stands on its own. Bookings Holdings is comprised of, as you can see here, Booking.com, they own Kayak, Priceline, Agata, RentalCars.com, and Open Table. So the only one on here that might be new to you guys is the Agata franchise, which operates primarily in the Far East. I had to learn a little bit about it myself, but it's basically a gateway to reservations and experiences in the Far East. Open Table, if you're not familiar, is an app that allows you to book reservations at I don't know, hundreds of restaurants in your city. Um, it's very helpful. I use it all the time. I've already used it for uh, Mother's Day and Easter and things like that. So check out Open Table if you haven't already. That's definitely an app that can save you some time. All right, so looking at Booking Holdings, and what's interesting right now for Booking Holdings is it's actually in a really good spot to buy right now. They just had a uh, blip on the radar for their Q1 earnings that sort of turned the stock down a little bit. You can see this is a one-year chart. They have been as high as 2162 way back into, it looks like, June of 2018, and they sort of slipped through on the different stock market fluctuations and right now they're down to 17.59. Okay, so they've got a P ratio of 1993 currently. The forward PE drops to 15.49, which is a nice key indicator. That's sort of what we're looking for is the cost of profits is going down in the future. And overall, Bookings Holdings is just a great stock for this new age of digital travel. Um, like I said, their track record is really strong. They do not have a dividend right now, um, but they're sort of like a Google where they're reinvesting into growth. So this is considered a growth stock, even though the price of it is maybe not what you guys associate with growth stock. So Bookings Holdings, number one on the list. Check it out if you're interested. All right, number two on the list today is the Expedia Group. And outside of the Expedia website, which I'm sure many of you have visited before, they also own properties such as Hotels.com, Trivago, Home Away, Hotwire, VRBO. And VRBO is one that you may have not heard of before, but it's Vacation Rentals by Owner. And it basically is a large database of vacation rental properties that you can book for your vacation or short trip. And the reason VRBO is particularly interesting is because you think of the app out there, Airbnb, which sort of came up and gave uh, individuals an opportunity to rent their home in the short term or long term. VRBO was out before them, before Airbnb, right? So they have already integrated with a lot of people. They're bigger than Airbnb, um, and they already have a profit system lined up. So VRBO is not the most recognizable name on this brand sequence here, but it's definitely one to keep in mind if you're shopping for Expedia stock. Okay, from a stock perspective, Expedia trades at $117. The current P ratio is 40. You got a forward PE of 14.3. So a lot of stuff dropping here, which is a good sign for Expedia. Similar to bookings.com, they've had some ups and downs in Q1 as far as hitting their numbers. Um, but the future is still bright for Expedia. They do actually offer a 1% dividend. It's actually 0.99% uh, dividend. So that's a nice bonus. And I think with Expedia's collection of brands and the way the travel industry is going, they've got a nice place in the market and will continue to turn profits for investors. The catch, of course, for all these travel stocks is will the travel market stay strong? Will it ideally pick up 
into Q2 and Q3. Now that the jobless claims are at an all-time low, you know, unemployment's in a good place, and paychecks are supposedly rising, you would figure all that sets up for a great summer travel market. But just know that anytime you have a dip in the travel market, these are going to be the first stocks to go. Okay, number three on the list and the last of our individual digital travel companies is TripAdvisor. And TripAdvisor is a lot different than Booking Holdings and Expedia, and they're actually much newer to the game from a, a public perspective. So TripAdvisor takes a whole nother angle. It's almost like a uh, social recommendation platform. So obviously with reviews and travel, Expedia bookings, they all do reviews, but they kind of give you an opportunity to take on all legs of your travel right within the TripAdvisor uh, app and dashboard. And you can connect to just about anything from things to do to restaurants, hotels, rentals, all those things. And it turns into sort of like a Facebook for travel, but also gives you the opportunity to book within those recommendations and ideas. So it's a pretty slick little platform, and I think it's definitely one that has some room to grow. Travelers in younger demographics, millennials, and down into even teenagers, their travel is much more uh, shareable, I guess you could say. Whereas a family may just want to get away, share a couple pictures, but for the most part, they're getting away from the world. The adventurer explorer or the person that is doing it a little bit more publicly is going to love a platform like TripAdvisor because it's almost like an e-commerce platform that allows you to bounce ideas off your friends and check the reviews and even see places where your friends stayed, ate, or went to when they were on their vacation. So pretty ingenious idea. Now, TripAdvisor from a stock perspective is a little bit more of a gamble than the other two behemoths I mentioned before with Expedia and Booking Holdings, but that's simply because it's a new idea, it's a smaller platform, and it probably has a little bit more of a bull case if all things go correctly, if they're widely accepted and their shareable platform becomes something that is more popular with the travel groups. So with that, you're coming in today at a price of $46. You got a PE of 48.84, so definitely on the high side, but the forward PE comes down to 21, so they are definitely making gains. No dividend, obviously, and you can see on the chart here, the TripAdvisor, like the others, has had a little bit of a dip coming out of the Q1 earnings. Now, this is gonna be a lot more volatile of a stock over the next 12 to 18 months as investors try to figure out exactly where it sits in this travel niche and is it a game changer or is it just another participant. So you can expect wild swings and that might be good if you're trying to wait for the low and sell on the high. The, tw the 52 week range for TripAdvisor as I'm looking at it was $43 to $69. And the highs weren't necessarily compartmentalized into the rest of the stock market. So back in October and into November, they had a dip all, or a uh, shot all the way up to 63. They've ebbed and flowed in the 50s and 60s for the better part of the last six months. But they are down right now, so it could signal a buying opportunity. For myself, anyway, I'd need to dig in a little bit more, see what the growth objectives are, projections, etc. check on the debt levels, and just make sure the game plan is solid. But from a 52-week range, this is a really nice price to look into TripAdvisor. All right, so last one in the video today is actually an ETF that I own. And the reason I'm sharing it with you here today is because it is a great way to kind of hedge a bet on the travel industry as a whole, including the digital companies that I represented here. It's the IYC, iShares US Consumer Services ETF. And basically when you buy into an ETF like this, you're buying into consumer staples and discretionary spending. Now it leans a lot harder to the discretionary spending. So when I talk about things like low unemployment rate, pay scales rising into the future, um, affordability indexes uh, staying down, then that's all good signs for discretionary spending. But 
things like tweets from the president, China trade, concerns over AI stealing jobs. Those are bad things for discretionary spending. Um, so you just have to keep your eye out before you jump into something like this. I personally am a big fan of the U.S. consumer. And I think that the U.S. consumer, if you're going to go back historically, it's a solid, solid bet to make that you would have a lot of a lot of trouble poking holes in the U.S. consumer over any 10 year stretch. So from a retirement or a long term perspective, I'm a big fan of this IYC ETF as a different way to play the market than just like a global index fund. Right now, IYC trades at $210. Now that's very close to the 52 week high. So 52 week high is 218. So even though we've had a lot of roller coaster rides in the stock market, since about mid January, the stock market's been trending up. So you might decide if you're gonna get in for the first time, you might wait for the next dip to try to get a little bit of a discount on this one. However, it does have a dividend yield of 0.72%. The expense ratio is 0.43%. Most ETFs are above 0.50 on expense percentages. So just know that this one comes in just at least fair at the bottom line. Um, and you've been anywhere from 168 to 218 on your 52 week range. Bottom line, if you believe in the United States consumer, if you start to see earnings in the Walmarts of the world, the Disneys of the world, things like that, and you have a bull feeling for those earnings to continue rising, then this is a great stock to invest in to get a slice of not only travel, but all discretionary spending. All right, this is a little bit of an eye chart, but I wanted to call out the travel holdings within IYC. You can see that Disney sits on the top of the board of the travel holdings. It has a weight of 4.67%. Then you get into booking holdings, Marriott, Delta, Southwest, Las Vegas Sands, Expedia, American Airlines, TripAdvisor, you name it. If it's planes and trains and hotels and booking situations and entertainment parks, it is represented here. The total travel percentage within IYC, which I just did a simple addition of the weight of each holding, it came down to 13% of IYC as a whole. So if you're interested in the travel industry, but you also want to hedge your bets in case there's some sort of travel collapse coming on the market soon, IYC is a great way to do it while balancing a little bit between being 100% in travel and more like 13% in travel and knowing that the U.S. consumer can pretty much bail you out of any travel hiccups that come in that sector. All right, so those are the travel stocks and ETF I have for you today. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Please like the channel and subscribe if you get a chance. I really appreciate your support. We'll see you on the next video.